Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna do some flying at night. We are in lesson five of this VFR training from FS Academy. We're in back in our faithful 152, so let's give it a go. VFR at night has some pros and cons, with some differences that you should be aware of. Conditions at night are generally better than in the day, with smooth air, lighter winds and improved visibility. Lit runways and other traffic are easier to see. On the other hand, your visual references are restricted, with less ground features visible for navigation and often the absence of a clear horizon. Follow this taxiway all the way to the full length holding point for runway 08 here at Toronto City Airport. All right, we'll do. It's a bright red light in the cockpit. Take a quick look around us here. At a city over there. Cool. All right, let's go. Parking brake. Trying out a new track R profile. I need to adjust it a little bit. So sorry for the, if you any, notice any weird movements during the video. As the light levels are so low, your night vision is important and needs protecting. White light quickly cancels your night vision and it can take up to 30 minutes to fully restore it. I did Red not know that. light has a much lower effect. So any torches or cabin lighting is best if it's in a reddish color, such as the Cessna 152 dome light here. We'll depart 08 and make a right turn and you'll quickly see how the lack of the horizon forces you to rely more heavily on your instruments. Cessna Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie, ready for departure. Clear on the left. Departing circuit to the south. Clear on the Sierra right. Sierra Alpha Charlie, roger. Cleared VFR, not above 2,500 feet. Cleared for takeoff runway 08, wind calm. VFR, not above 2,500 feet. Cleared for takeoff runway 08, Sierra Alpha Charlie. Take off and climb towards 2,300 feet. We'll leave the circuit to the south. Okie dokie. Power set. Oh, rudder's a little bit sensitive here. And we're up. Aim in for about 80 knots. Flaps up now that we're passing 300 feet above airfield level. The climb attitude flaps up gives about 7 degrees nose up on the attitude indicator with 75 knots. Make a mental note of this for later. Now make a right turn to heading 180 and keep climbing to 2,300 feet. Okay. 180. As we look out over Lake Ontario in the dark, see how your horizon has already pretty much vanished. 
Shift your focus more onto your instruments, but remember we're still VFR and need to maintain a lookout. Sierra Alpha Charlie requests to leave the zone to the east en route Oshawa along the shoreline. Sierra Alpha Charlie, roger, leave the zone, not above 2,500 feet VFR, call at boundary. Not above 2,500 feet VFR, Wilco, Sierra Alpha Charlie. We don't want to get too far out over the lake, so make a left turn to heading 020, back to the shoreline. All right, 020. This heading keeps us tracking the north shore of Lake Ontario, parallel the runway, and brings back a partial horizon with the streetlights off in the distance. Try to use both the partial horizon and the instruments to set and maintain an accurate straight and level. Take us back to the shoreline. All right, back to the shoreline we go. So I had to switch my Trek R profile back to the one I had. I did not like that other one, so. We're back at the shoreline, so make a right turn heading 060 to follow the shore eastbound. All right, 060, following the shore. Sierra Alpha Charlie, zone boundary outbound, request frequency change to Oshawa, 120.1. Sierra Alpha Charlie, frequency change approved. Keep tracking the coast on heading 060 and we'll switch over to Oshawa. shoreline is much like a line feature, so keep the shore on your left to keep it in sight and expect opposite direction traffic to be doing the same. Traffic is easier to see at night thanks to the position lights, strobes and landing light. The green position light is on the right wing and the red on the left. This makes deciphering the orientation easy as the color indicates which side of the aircraft you're seeing. If you see both red and green, you're approaching head on. If you do encounter another aircraft head on, you both make a turn to your right to increase separation. Keep on following the shore heading 060. All right, thanks. I did not know that about the lights. So green is on the right, red is on the left. o'clock off the left wing, you can see up the center line of the runway at Buttonville. I uh, do see an airport right there. Cool. Looking straight ahead over the nose, we can see the flashing runway light at Oshawa Executive, which is where we're heading. Notice how airports are much easier to pick out at night if they have lit runways. Unlit grass runways can be nearly impossible to spot, however, so those airfields would only be operational during the day. I'll get the weather for Oshawa. Normally an ATIS is available, but out of hours it's an automated weather observation system, AWOS. Sure, thanks. Oshawa automated weather observation system. Observation taken at zero. 0 UTC, wind 270 at 4 knots, visibility greater than 9, sky condition view 3000, IFR approach RMP 30, landing and departing runway 30, temperature 15, 2.4, altimeter 29.92. All right.
right, so we now know it's runway 30 in use with a light headwind. The altimeter is already set to 29.92. The USA and Canada report an altimeter setting instead of a Q and H, which is effectively the same but using different units. Q and H is reported in hectopascals and altimeter settings are inches of mercury. Altimeters allow settings from either system, as seen in R152, with the millibar scale on the left and inches of mercury scale on the right. Canada VFR rules require 500 feet vertical separation when below cloud in uncontrolled airspace. Cloud is reported as few at 3,000 feet, so if we stick to cruising at 2,300 feet, then we know we're fine. The USA applies the same rule, but most other countries just require you to stay clear of cloud until above 3,000 feet. Keep flying us towards Oshawa, heading 060. On it, boss. So I had a honeycomb yoke, alpha yoke, and I sold it because I just didn't have the desk space for it. But now I have a, a sim rig set up and I ordered another one. So I just got to try to find a Bravo. I had that on order too, but I, once I sold my alpha, I canceled my pre-order for the Bravo. Figures I'd go right back to it. Currently using the Warthog. Hotess. Which I really like. It's still good, but maybe um flying with the with the yoke would make things a little bit easier. I'm not sure. Be interesting to see though. I think I'll have it within the next uh keep tracking the shore on heading zero six zero. Okay, whoops, sorry, we'll do. I think I'll have it Oshawa within the next two weeks. operates what's known as a mandatory frequency area. This means a radio is required to fly into or near the airfield. We're getting close to the Oshawa MF zone, so we'll call up and announce our position and intentions. Oshawa traffic, Cessna, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, 10 miles southwest, 2,300 feet, inbound landing 30, Oshawa. We know from the AWOS that it's runway 30 in use, which is a normal left-hand circuit. In other ICAO countries, we'd make an overhead join, descending on the dead side before joining the crosswind leg. The USA and Canada allow joining uncontrolled circuits straight into the downwind leg from a 45 degree intercept at circuit altitude. The elevation at Oshawa is 460 feet, so start descending now to a circuit altitude of 1,500 feet, aiming for the center of the airfield. Note that the runway lights we see up ahead is runway 05, but that's not the one currently in use. All right, start my descent now. I mean, that's where planning comes into effect because you know, not knowing that what runway you're looking at, you wouldn't know which way to join the circuit. And I'll be honest, this, that part's a little confusing. I had to look at the chart a few times just to kind of get an idea of what our game plan was. So, planning is key. Planning is key. Maintain 1,500 feet as the circuit altitude until turning base. Oshawa traffic, Cessna, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, joining mid downwind 30, Oshawa. All right, so we're at 15. Try to level off and trim. I don't see any other air, air traffic.
probably could go just a little bit faster. Okay, we're reaching the downwind leg. Turn right, heading one two zero. All right, right heading one two zero. Don't want to get caught going up too high. Oshawa traffic, Cessna, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, downwind, 3-0, Oshawa. Yep, there downwind we go. Downwind checks, brakes pressured and released, undercarriage fixed, mixture full rich, fuel on and sufficient, instrument T's and P's are green, cabin is secure. go down yet I think I'm probably a little wider maybe on a downwind circuit altitude is 1,500 feet yeah Fly I know downwind heading 120 we'll stay at 1400 that's gonna be turning let me get back to 120 here we go. Sorry about that, boss. Looks like a good place for turning base. Start okay. turning left, power back, and commence your descent. Take flaps 10 when within the wide airspeed band. Flaps 10. A high wing aeroplane such as the Cessna is great when en route, as you have a clearer view downwards towards the ground. But turning in the pattern can be a little bit more difficult. Configure the flaps and set your speed as appropriate. Oshawa traffic, Cessna, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, final three zero to land, Oshawa. Not a final yet. Just a little bit more. Okay, let's turn in. Cut back power even more. We'll go landing flaps. We have four whites, so we're definitely high. Either make a full stop landing off of this one or continue to practice night circuits with touch and goes. Once you're done, press escape to exit. All right, we'll do. We're going to do full stop. Okay, just a tad high now. There we go. Trying to stay on the glide path. A little high. Aiming for the touchdown zone. back and flaring and we are down all right we did it we finished our first uh night flight and you know it was pretty good i don't think i did too bad getting a little bit better i i can see that so uh but anyways thanks again for uh sticking along and we'll see you for the next one